back now live to Melanie Yang. Mel, you've been getting some very interesting uh, insight from our guest, Alan Bonner. He is a risk crisis management specialist. Uh, what are you hearing now? All right, well, of course, we are waiting for that news conference, patiently waiting, and uh, I'm sure we'll be chatting about it afterwards, what's discussed. Uh, we're looking ahead a little bit, too, to PS... My apologies. <laughs> PTSD. Right. So... Uh, and everyone's wondering, you know, how does that come into play here? Because this story, far from over, it will go well beyond once they get this mm -hmm. suspect. Yeah. Well, cr crisis managers also study how media cover events. What do you do in the first hour, the first day, the first week? There will be a time, a day or two from now, when post-traumatic stress disorder becomes a story, and there may be feature stories in the newspapers now. Um, let me just say that um, although it is a horrific ailment, if you have it and it can be debilitating and incapacitating post-traumatic stress disorder is actually quite rare uh, the studies of it in earthquakes and natural disasters indicate that about 25 percent uh, of the people report some kind of nervousness uh, elevated startle response you can measure elevated uh, neurotransmitters and chemicals in the brain so I mean it's a real thing and mm -hmm. the courts recognize it the medical profession recognize it it is in the diagnostic and statistical manual of the American Psychiatric Association and if it ain't in there it ain't a disease. Uh, interestingly the drop-off after a couple of months is down to single-digit percentage points. In the Valdez uh, Exxon oil spill for example in Alaska by the time researchers studied it seven percent of Aboriginals reported uh, some kind of ill effects and mainly that was headaches. Let's take it to 9-11 in New York. Mm -hmm. Here's where some of the caregivers don't help they don't actually provide care. Everybody with any kind of qualification from marriage counselor, high school counselor, psychiatrist, psychologist, psychological student, etc., got in a cab and went down to ground zero and pulled firefighters and cops out of the line, and tried to give them counseling, what have you. This made matters worse. This is not a crisis for police and for military and investigators right. like the FBI. This is another day at the office. They are trained to do this. They generally will not experience okay, right. PTSD okay, because they okay, expect to encounter horrific things on the job. Who may experience PTSD is the people who are running down the street for charity on a bright sunny day mm -hmm. with a child in a stroller and all of a sudden there's an explosion. Now that is the classic case or trigger event for PTSD. We're talking thousands of people who are standing by that finish line, young and old as you mentioned, and then there are the victims who are left left minus a limb with and, a constant reminder. Yeah, and experience some trauma as well. So, I mean, it's there, but let's not get carried away and give people counseling who don't want it or don't ask for it. When, a, when there's an incident in a school, you sometimes do more harm forcing every child to talk about this. It should be available, but it shouldn't be forced on people. Mm -hmm. uh, let's uh, go back into the manhunt itself. And uh, what could you assume that is going through this suspect's head? right now. Well, this is, um, uh, talk about elevated startle response and neurotransmitters in the brain. This is a person who is uh, probably absolutely in lay terms drunk on adrenaline. I mean when you have committed such a heinous crime, you've planned it, you've executed it, your heart is racing well over 120 beats a minute probably. You manage to get away from the scene, you watch the coverage on TV, it crosses your mind, you're responsible for a couple of deaths, so who knows what state of, of mind that causes. And then your, your brother is shot in this massive shootout and that was real life. Life. Those mm -hmm. pops that we heard, you know, it's not a cop show. This is real life. A stray bullet can kill somebody. Uh, there was a, ma a, you know, a, a matter of fact, with our peacekeepers in Cyprus, there was someone who wanted to tape record uh, the battle outside his hotel room, and he was shot in the head, died. It was a Captain Patton, as a matter of fact, and there's an attention area there. So this is a dangerous, dangerous place, and his mind is racing. He is drunk on adrenaline, and uh, just like a cage 
caged uh, rat, if you will, uh, wondering where, what the next sound is going to bring. His name is out there, his picture's out there, his background is out there, and we're learning more pieces of the puzzle, and more people are starting to come forward, uh, like you heard from some of the individuals there. Oh, I met him before high school. Hmm. Uh, the, he got a scholarship. He did this. He worked here. Now, with all of this coming together, this is closing in on him, every little bit of him. Well, every available police officer, including detachments from New York City, are up in Boston and in its suburbs watching every conceivable exit. I mean, they're, they're looking in sewers, probably. So uh, I would predict, and I agree with the predictions that say he's going to be caught, but man, what a tense uh, situation, because this could be someone who um, uh, gets dressed up as a telephone worker, impersonates a telephone worker, knocks on a door, says, I want to check the phone lines, or, or maybe even and impersonates a police officer, do you know we're in a, a terrible situation? I mean, the, the, my, my mind can see no bounds of the horrific scenarios th that are going to uh, unfold. Shooting. I've often said in some of these school lockdowns where there is a reported incident and the police SWAT team arrives and walks on the roof and they have machine guns, I said the biggest danger statistically is probably a police officer, well trained mind you, falling over accidentally discharging a weapon uh, or concerned parents rushing towards the scene or civilians maybe with a military or police background saying all, all help, you know, officials don't need help in a situation like this. They need people to stay indo indoors and, uh, and uh, not, not get involved. Important advice. Uh, we'll come back to you, Alan. Uh, meantime, we're going to go back to Andrea, who is continuing to monitor coverage on her end. Andrea.